Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'd like to welcome our retail partners uh, who are from around the world here are visiting us at our retail summit. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that we wanted to start off with was the uh, running, natural running movement. And uh, if I can quote Jim Hickson here, uh, last year we had the panel and uh, there was a comment that this is a revolution. And Jim says, no, 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 it's a re-evolution. We're going back to what began. And so uh, we felt it was important to start this year because of s uh, such a great uh, uh, momentum that's happening in this, <clears throat> in this movement to uh, bring in some unbelievable, outstanding, distinguished panelists that uh, we'll introduce here to you in just a minute. Uh, in addition to our retail partners, we also invited the public to show up. So there are some, uh, some non-Newton-esque people here that are here to learn all about natural running and and uh, so we appreciate your coming as well so welcome and all those you went to the party last night and got up and run this morning uh, you're looking darn good so <laughs> uh, what I'd like to do is start off by uh, introducing uh, Brian Metzler Brian is the senior editor of Running Times Brian was also an all-state high school runner he ran for the University of Illinois and fighting Illini and uh, he is uh, obviously a, uh, a great writer, and, and uh, you probably, I'm sure, read many of his articles in uh, many of the running publications. And on top of that, uh, Brian's one of these guys that uh, keeps track of every mile he runs. And so he's over 50,000 miles at this point. So uh, he's been around the world, I think, once or twice. Uh, but anyway, I will, uh, I'll come back after the uh, presentation, but I'll turn it over to Brian. Thank you very much. Brian. I'm uh, psyched to be part of this because uh, running obviously goes way back with me, and I guess running shoes do too. One of the things I've done for the last 10 or 12 years uh, for various magazines is test shoes. And so prototypes come in, I test them, I have test groups uh, test them out, and uh, then we evaluate them in a magazine. So I, I've probably tested uh, 500, 750 pair of shoes in the last 10 or 12 years. And so like you guys as retailers, you go through the process of figuring out what you want to buy based on your reasons. and. I go through the process of testing out shoes, put, putting them on runners, and, and kind of getting their feedback. And it's pretty interesting kind of where running shoes have come, obviously, in the last 10 years, and especially in the last two or three years. <clears throat> um, to my left is Dr. Irene Davis, who's the director of running, uh, uh, the injury lab at the uh, University of Delaware. She's studied running uh, gait, uh, running injuries and everything for the last 20 years, and is a barefoot runner a lot of the time, or most of the time. Dr. Mark Kukuzala, University of West Virginia, who's also been studying running injuries. He's also a um, elite Masters runner, he's ran 234 at Boston this year, and he's run 20 years of sub 235 is, or so? 22 of the last 24 years. Okay, so obviously a, fa a fast runner, and he's got some interesting stories he'll tell about how he came to a point in his career running-wise that he thought he was done, and um, changed his running style, changed his gait, and now he's running fast again. Uh, Danny Abshire, who is the co-founder of Newton Running and the Chief Technology Officer, he's uh, one of the main, if not the main force behind Newton Running, who um, back in the 1980s started making lightweight uh, insoles, footbeds to correct people's gaits, to get people more upright, more neutral, more, more forward leaning, and eventually that led to shoe design and kind of where we are now with Newton. Uh, the next person, Zola Bud, I don't need to uh, introduce her too much, but uh, two-time Olympian, um, the, the last uh, barefoot Olympian, also a two-time world cross-country champion. And she started out as a barefoot runner as a kid, ran barefoot for a long time, and is now a shod runner. She runs in shoes. Uh, Danny Dreyer, uh, who I mentioned, um, who is founder of Chi Running, who was uh, studying some of this back uh, 10 years ago or so, and came up with Chi Running, which is a little bit more holistic approach to natural running, but um, he can explain that a little bit more than he, than he has. Uh, Jay Deshiri, who's at the end there at the University of Virginia. Um, he's a, a physical therapist by trade, and uh, he's the director of the Speed Performance Lab there at uh, UVA. And, UVA uh, authored one of the biggest studies of the last year about uh, running uh, impact and, and, and um, how it affects the body with different uh, shearing forces, and, and Jay will talk about that in a minute. You know, last year we were talking, we were here, a lot of us were here, and there was this idea that, wow, what's going on? Something cool is going on. It was just after Born to Run came out, and people just started to talk about it. There's a lot of newspaper articles about, wow, barefoot running is better than running in shoes and all that stuff, and a lot of reactionary stuff. And now, a year later, we're at a much better place where <clears throat> The whole thing is about natural running. It's first it was barefoot running and then minimalism, and then all this different stuff. But now we're at natural running. And uh, <clears throat> last week at the outdoor retailer show, I don't know if anyone was there, but it was all about natural running and like your foot interacting with the ground and, and kind of how that's how it's an important part of your everyday running. 
So I guess starting off with that, the question I'm going to ask first is what is natural running and is there a better way to run? Go ahead. Uh, natural running is really, as far as I'm concerned, running in a, ba in a way that the body was designed to run. It's really getting back to real basics. And so that's why barefoot running has okay, had such a great upsurge lately, it's because you can't get more natural than running without shoes on. But the whole idea is, you know, when you run without shoes, your body really, your feet have so many nerve endings, they really educate your body how the ground feels when it's underneath you. And, uh, you know, with a lot of the overbuilt shoes that have been coming into the market over the last 40 years, you know, it's deadening and deadening and stiffening and caging in your foot. So we're trying to, like, get a roof revolution in, in a way of, like, getting things a little more minimal, a little more natural. And then your foot can actually start working in a good way. And the people that have probably the best natural running form are people that run a lot barefoot or have habitually been unshot. And what we're trying to do is to really get people <coughs> to run in a natural, barefoot-like stride, whether they're in shoes or not. And that's the whole idea. Is to, because not everybody's going to go barefoot. Not everybody should go barefoot necessarily. It helps, but it's not, I wouldn't recommend that's how everybody runs all the time. So I would just say that work towards always having a good, natural gait, whether, no matter what shoes you have. And Hopefully you'll be, feet, your, your feet will have to at some point say, you know, I need a little bit less of a shoe. Is there a better way to run? And kind of what does that look like? Um, Danny already answered that. Let's go with uh, Dr. Kukuzela here, and, uh, or can I call you Mark? And uh, give us a little bit of your spiel and uh, how, how that looks, like natural running and, and how the better way to run looks. Yes, I'll, I'll put this in a kind of simple way. There's kind of the thinkers and non-thinkers. So I have a five and a seven-year-old, so the question, what is natural running? And uh, maybe they'll be able to come out this afternoon and to one of the clinics, but they're doing it naturally without thinking, and they do it better without their shoes. Their legs fly out behind them. They have this beautiful forward lean, a cadence of, you know, 90 to 100. Any of y'all have little kids? Do that. <laughs> but then there's the rest of us who probably kind of morphed into, you know, shoes and thinking about things and very analytical. So I bring things right back to, in a. Um, uh, Ian Anderson posted a nice document on uh, runningfront.com this week, basically about if you understand how a foot works anatomically and how your body above your foot, your whole kinetic chain, how does everything work efficiently and functionally in the way that we've evolved over however many years that is. I mean, every single joint and muscle and tendon in our body is there for a purpose. And, you know, I truly believe that the human body was designed to run. I mean, if you go into all Lieberman stuff, you know, why do we have a big toe? You know, why do we have these different rear foot structures? You know, why is our head this shape? So if you understand exactly how the foot works, then you'll figure out yourself how to run naturally. So if you need to think about it, you know, understand how the foot works. And that'll actually help you understand principles of elastic recoil, forward lean, posture, all the different components that Danny Abshire and Danny Dreyer, you know, describe in their teaching techniques. There's a lot of techniques out there to learn this, and they all overlap quite a bit. Um, they all have different step processes in how you learn, but the basic principles are very much the same. They're, they put you right back to watching that five-year-old run. So I'll, end, I'll stop there. Danny, why don't you jump in? Uh, <laughs> hey, um, you know, we did evolve uh, to run barefoot, and when we're barefoot, our feet are parallel to the ground. Center of mass is of the center of foot mass. We're in the perfect ideal starting place. Uh, anytime we place something underneath our foot, if I raise your heel, it alters, alters your center of mass. You react to that because we're all about balance. Um, if I put a ballet slipper on your foot, balance points over the toe, you're gonna walk around on your toe. So it's all about understanding the physics and how humans move and how we evolve to be uh, what we are. We have a distinctive walking gait, we have a distinctive running gait, we have a distinctive sprinting gait, and they are all separate. But over the past 40 years, we've been forced into a slightly altered position. That's why we're talking today. Uh, if we get a more neutralized position, you'll start in the best position to start your running and that won't be with striking your heel. That's the walking gait. And it won't be way up on your toes because that's sprinting. So 
First, you have to wipe away several decades of uh, influence from footwear manufacturers. They, you know, they thought that, hey, if we could ease that you know, impact uh, of the concrete and asphalt for these poor runners out there, uh, that will really help them. They didn't realize how they were going to alter the whole body kinematic or whole body movement. Because it does, if I put something under your foot, your body's going to react to it. Thus, it's not natural. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs>